Yes. Okay. Now everybody knows. <laughs> so I think that's an innovation because it didn't used to say that, did it? Um, but now we all know. Uh, I am really happy to uh, be uh, meeting with everybody for this last session. I, I've been uh, looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, kind of reports about what has happened. This is kind of like the last day in the trust training where we all come and do our, our little show and tell kind of thing. So this is kind of a show and tell day. Um, but first, during the prayer time, we were talking about one of the ladies who has a big project that um, that uh, that has all kinds of moving parts and pieces, and that is kind of an overwhelming project. Uh, and I just wanted to take a minute to show you uh, what I do when I have a project like that, because I personally. My comfort zone is to do two major activities in a day and and have them pretty simple and then I'm fine. And but if I need to do three, that stretches me. And if I have to do a big project in addition to the everyday stuff, it's easy for me to get freaked out. And so here's what I have learned to do with that. And I want to get I want you to get a piece of paper or a scrap paper or um, just write it on. Um, why don't you write it on the on the first page of the results? Just write just write the headers in here. So write the first header here and write the second header here. OK, uh, uh, if you haven't already written in that section. OK. When I do a project. I have learned, well, I, I, I would freak out, freak out, freak out, you know, hit every bump in the road. And then after the fact, I would have trouble remembering how God answered prayer all through it. Okay, so this is something I've developed that helps me um, at the beginning to set a course of, of trusting the Lord about it, and mm -hmm. then logging what, what, what is unfolding, okay? So on the first, you know, on, up at the top, I'll say what the project is. I'm going to put it really close. Yeah, let me. What the project is. And, and the first thing I do in the upper, in the, I, I, you see I have like two columns, okay? Mm -hmm. Here at, at, the, at the top left, I write down our needs, okay? This is what, what needs to happen. Every single time we moved, and I'm in the 28th house right now, that's, um, <laughs> and we, I, I had 19 by the time I graduated from college, so I've really slowed down. Um, but that means, uh, a, 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 you know, a, over 10 moves moving from a house to house or moving from city to city. And so each time there were specific requirements for that situation. So in, one, in some places we needed a two bedroom house or a two bedroom apartment. And in other places we needed three or we needed four, okay? There was a one move where we needed to have everything on one level because we thought that maybe we were going to be having Jim's mom uh, 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 live with us and she needed everything on. We needed a, a, a bedroom and a full bath on the main floor, you know, like that. Wow. So it, you see how it's this it's hold it up again for each thing. It's not it's not unique to a thing. So okay. so just put up the top of our needs and just be our real. needs be real um, open about it. You don't even to apologize. It's whatever it is that's the need, okay? The thing mm -hmm. down below that I, I start putting is what are the promises and words of instruction specifically that I'm hearing from the Lord as I start praying at the beginning, okay? So... 
so uh, so we have so 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 it is so it's bible verses and it's oh. things when i was praying about it and i heard kind of a reassurance in my spirit or a word of instruction you know don't tell anybody about this part of it this needs to be between you and me you know and i mean it's just whatever the, the mm -hmm. different things are where the lord says something of something to do during this project okay does that make sense yeah. Yeah. Has anybody had one of those where you were in like selling your house or moving or finding a new job or something and the oh. lord gave you okay here's one piece of instruction for you to do just pop out what what was an instruction that you got keep it simple great that's exactly Maybe. the kind of right. thing yeah. that's exactly the kind of thing that i'm talking about okay so promises and 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 you know whatever the instructions were that were for you for this project and then on the other part this this begins to unfold when you're going through the project and it, this side says what does god seem to be testing Okay, because the, 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 and that will unfold. There's some things where, where we would be thinking maybe we would be having words yeah, me, or something, but this is what the, does God, what does God seem to be testing? Okay, okay. and I generally, I, 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 I have room for, for promises and then I keep room for, you know, you can usually sum this up in in a couple of things. It's like big, big deal things. You know, it's like he's making me wait. You know, am I willing <laughs> to wait? You know, it's something something like that. Okay, and and then okay. things, then you begin to add things of what are more promises you get, what are more instructions. So this is this is kind of what's the input and guidance. Okay. So now let's go to the second page. And this is the genius of what I figured out. And this was the thing I added finally when we sold the last house that we lived in and moved into a rental. Okay. I figured mm -hmm. out because there's always setbacks that happen. Mm -hmm. So we go, oh, you know, and, and so it dawned on me with the with the last one that we did that they were mm -hmm. god ordained setbacks okay so have that as the title on the back of your page okay and then put a date of catastrophe okay and it's like you know like we found out that we had to have a, a second termite inspection yeah. so, and it was just monumental. We had lists and lists of things that we needed to do to get the house ready. And, and what were the setbacks? So this gets you, here's the date and here's the catastrophe and then put the date and the answer next to it. So you're mm -hmm. not going into tremendous detail, but in my experience, um, uh, in any big project, I had tons and tons. They usually mm -hmm. clear down the page, okay? Mm -hmm. But just titling it God Ordained Setbacks seemed to keep me in a place of faith. And it was like, okay, this is a huge project. There are going to be setbacks. God's going to take care of it. And as I'm writing answers in, um, that's increasing my faith during the project. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Phoebe. Yes. Question and comment. So this is on a daily basis. You're praying and then you're recording these things as you go along throughout the day as things pop up into your consciousness. Is that correct? Mm hmm Okay. And I just want to say, this is freaking brilliant. I love this. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. <laughs> I'm going to do this. Yeah. It, yeah, it is amazing. Two sides of one sheet of paper can keep you on track. It's amazing. 
Okay. Yeah, because I just said I'm going to be doing this big camp. The campaign was yeah. the name I used. Yeah. I'm going to do this. Thank that's, you so much. What a blessing. That's why, I, that's why I thought it might be, you know, it's a little, yeah. 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 Isn't that cool? I, okay. It, it's really cool. And I, I wish I had that when I was selling my house because yeah. God set back of not getting my coach uh, signed off by the city of Chula Vista so I could sell it. Yeah. And it was down to the last, the day before he was going to start charging me rent in my own house yeah. of uh, over a hundred dollars a day. Oh, my God. and at that, like you say, the ninth hour, yeah, I got word that it was, uh, yeah. that it came in and, uh, we were able to close on time yeah. and it was <laughs> yeah. sweating bullets, but yeah. this would have helped so much if I had yeah. had something like this I, and I wrote it down on yeah. here to remind me. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So it gives you initial promises and instructions, but then mm -hmm. as it goes along, the Lord shows other ones to you that, mm -hmm. that, that you add it, you need a place to add in the other encouragements and instructions that you get from the Lord. So anyway, yeah. all right. So let's jump into how much time have we got? Oh boy. All right. Um, I think that let's do the um, just the, the 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 thing on page on the November twenty first, and then um, and then let's jump into show and tell on your uh, you know your results for the for the Bible study. Okay. So okay. what page is that on? Uh, November 21st one is on page 226. Thank you. And it's the one about stand down and my fourth MRI. Yeah. Okay. 226. 226. Okay. And, and the question is, yeah. what, what are some of the ways that 11 months of doing the drills made it easier to handle this MRI? Well, it was easier for you to key into body cues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was much more aware of them. Yeah, okay. What else? Um, I, I like what and I put down, pra sorry, practice, practice, practice of longer and focused breathing. Yes, yes. So I had a lot more breath capacity. Right. Have you have all of you had an MRI? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. I mean, you get they, they I mean, they wire you up and you know put you down, then send you into this tube, and uh, and then they'll say, "Okay, breathe," and it's like you're you're doing it for like twenty seconds, twenty five seconds, <laughs> like long. <laughs> and that, I think that's between the claustrophobia that a lot of people get fr from it and the, and the kind of this stress of can I hold my breath long enough, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a freaky. And then they strap you in and it's, it's weird. It usually isn't done so that you're feeling really comfortable. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm um, a fan of doing MRIs. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, when I uh, had, the, well, several MRIs, but especially this last one for uh, finding out, you know, what was wrong with my brain is that um, I just, I, before I even gave everything to the Lord, I just asked Jesus to be with me. Yeah. hold me yeah. and to get me through yeah it went through so fast and i didn't even know i was there i was with yeah. jesus mm -hmm. you know i was wrapped in his arms and it was the most wonderful thing and the best mri i ever had <laughs> you know for peacefulness yeah. Yeah. you know oh yeah, great wonderful yeah okay any other so the second question is have you had an occasion recently that highlighted progress he's made because you've been doing these drills. What did you notice? I noticed that, I don't know, there, I can actually analyze the situation 
in a kind of non-emotional place. Yeah. Where I can, all of a sudden, it just seemed that, that the Lord just paints a very clear picture of the whole situation of what's going on. And I don't know, it, it, it is, it, it's beautiful because you do, you do experience the peace of Christ. Yeah. He will always kind of murmur, you know, it's, it's okay, I got it. I got this, you know, so, yeah. That's cool. Anybody else? Well, I noticed that um, when I pushed through the resistance and did the drills, that it felt like an act of obedience, at, you know, at times. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right, Pat, but it's wonderful because it's an act of obedience. And what the results of that act of obedience are, is, is yeah. far, far more beautiful and far more satisfying than if we hadn't have pushed through in obedience. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's worth, the goal is worth it. Yeah. I mean, the outcome is worth it. Yeah. And something I love here where you said hidden with Christ and God, all of a sudden it became, let's put it this way, it became more tangible. Yeah. I didn't bring it with me, but I have a little that I did with Teddy. I did a, a rock. We painted rocks. Oh. And I made one with a cave. This rock, mm -hmm. like a, you know, looks like a mountain. Yeah. You just grow like a little cave. What I didn't realize then, it says hidden with Christ. He's in that cave with him. Exactly. In God. And so exactly. the, you know, the mountain, the cave is, is the sheltering of God. But Christ is right there with me, wow. and so to me that was that's that's tr tremendous assurance. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. yeah. That phrase has huge power if yeah. we will allow our minds to dwell on that. Mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. remember from Colossians three, uh, you know the first several verses. That was a section that was packed with positional truth. Yeah. And so, so this phrase, hidden with Christ in God, mm -hmm. like that, it's like this, this uh, Jesus and me burrito, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing. And I think that that's such a powerful idea. Um, mm -hmm. that it, 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 that's a phrase that would be good to, you know, when you are are um, wondering what to meditate on, that would be a really good thing mm -hmm. to meditate on. I am hit, hidden and a lot of, you know, a lot of the things about ourselves are mysterious even to ourselves, yeah. right? And so this is hidden, but I'm with Christ, okay, mm -hmm. in God. I, it's just amazing praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. that, we don't we don't even when we don't know about certain things about ourselves or about situation or whatever. It's kind of cool because if you think he's there, he does know. I don't need to know. He'll take care of it. Yeah. yeah. So that to me that that that's tremendously satisfying. Yeah. Uh because we're running short on time today and I do want to uh, get you out in the normal time, um, why don't we skip ahead to uh, and and talk about the snapshot of my progress after doing this study? Um, was anybody able to do the, to see the you know what you did at the beginning and what you and compared to what what you what you were answering this time around? Um, Oh, Dee, I just looked and looked again for your email, and I don't, for some reason or other, I don't know what happened. I don't have it. That's so, so weird. I know. The I'm page. Gonna send me the whole, everything. But this anyway, is, this is the the last lesson, and yeah. it's page three. Yeah. No, it's I didn't get any oh. lesson, and it's page number three. Is it, is it, are the questions very much the same as the first yeah. one? Yeah, so, so let me go that. through, so let me go through and circle the answer oh, that it. describes you now. So the first one is, how comfortable are you now about going to God yeah. about your fears or other messy emotions? So, anybody? I got it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Not at yeah. all uncomfortable, hesitant, but I do it okay about it. Very comfortable. Very comfortable for me. Okay. Anybody? No, yeah. I run. You got it? No, I'm saying now I run. Oh, Not okay. Very comfortable. Now, I'm run run now I run. That's good. How often do you talk it over with God now? when you feel upset, worried, fearful, angry, or discouraged. And if we, and the never, rarely, sometimes, often, always. 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 Okay. Do you feel more knowledgeable now about how your brain processes fear and danger? Definitely. I, I was total uh, mind opening. <laughs> in yeah. learning about the pilot and so forth. Okay. It just blew me away when we started it. I never had thought about, you know, in those terms and uh, how my mind directs me, mm -hmm. you know, and how I can be taken, my emotions can take me away. Yeah. From the sensible me, mm -hmm. you know, the pilot. Yeah. Okay. So how, about, how about anybody else? Uh, do you feel more knowledgeable now about how your brain processes fear and trauma? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't go back. <laughs> That's yeah. that way. Okay. I wouldn't go back for anything in the world. No. Okay. I think, I think one of your most recent drawings, where was it? We had that aha. Uh -huh. I don't know where it was. The ha uh, where, where we see, yeah, I can't find it real quick. But that one last drawing that you did for us, uh, where you just you brought a c accumulation. Let me see if it's, I don't even know where it is. Is it this one? Is it the window of tolerance? No, no, no. Oh. No, it's a drawing where we're with Christ. Everything in the world is all kind of crazy and we're in it. But no, we're with Christ. Oh. You know, you know uh, and oh. just, yeah, so it's not, so it's taking us out of that frustration and stuff and putting us right into with with christ that he is the one in control so you know, you that was really a good aha uh -huh, you know found mm -hmm. that to be helpful yes uh, you're very, talking very, about yeah. one of the cartoons in the book right right and it's a visualization it just <coughs> yeah here it is the civilian affair thing so it's on page uh, 183. 183 yeah ah so you got that's amazing. That. So it looks like this. So that's an amazing uh, visualization for you. That's what you're saying, Donna. Yes, yes. So you've got this stuff, and no, it's replaced this with that, with that little, with your barrier there. How we're, you can separate that that confusion and what yeah. can be in the peace of Christ. Mm -hmm. so you can step aside. Oh, that's really great. Yeah, okay. so that was a good one for me. Okay, so number four, do you now feel more confident to know which drill will likely work well in each distressful time to pull you out of flight, fight, or freeze? Yes. You have a better idea which drill to choose? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, there were that's... things that I, that I thought they were flight or fright, and actually what it was, it was, <coughs> it, 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 you know, it was freeze, and I was confused because it felt like fight or flight. But okay. the truth of the matter, it was freeze. So it was kind of cool to, to identify that, yeah. Okay, great, great. So so that you're able to discern yes. which one was more appropriate. I yeah. love that. That's the whole thing that I was going to <laughs> Okay, great. Um, anybody else? Uh, Pat, did you have something to say? Well, I, I just feel the same way. I, I am a lot more um, in tune with which one, you know, which drill to use more okay. than I was when I started, for sure. Great. Okay. And um, so the first test was uh, question number five relates to that. Right now, after I do a drill and then try to pray, how easy is it to feel calmer so I can truly connect with Jesus as a person? Not easy, rarely easy, depends, sometimes easy, often easy. Often no, off, easy. Often, yeah. yeah. Easy, okay. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Isn't yeah. that amazing? Yeah. 
Yeah, because I the last um, test I put depends. It depends upon the situation yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so this is an improvement. So that's great. Anybody else want to comment on that? Okay. So the second test, how often am I able to successfully and consistently pull myself out of flight, fight, or freeze mode with or without doing a brain drill, even when under extreme stress? So sometimes just knowing the drills, you know, helps us mm -hmm. to kind of, oh, this is what I know. And I collect myself, even if I don't do a drill, um, uh, so it can work that way. But for me, often it's mm -hmm. by doing a drill. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so you know, get revved up or something. If I'm in a situation where I can't go through the drill, at least I can start doing the first part of it. It's either yeah. concentrate on my breathing or squishing the floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that'll and that'll immediately it'll immediately help my brain. Yeah. Tremendously. I mean it'll just it'll yeah. be, and maybe it's because I don't wait too long. I'm I, when I start identifying that I'm starting to rev up in any way or go down, I immediately I'll start doing it and it's incredible how fast it'll for the situation, let's put it that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was right. thankful to learn about the micro movements because yeah. when I do my treatments, I can't move for 10 solid minutes. I can't make any physical movements. I have to be still, but in my, so I can take it through with my mind. Oh, my okay. It's very helpful. Yeah. And then, um, um, I'm able to intensely pray. It, it's a very concentrated um, prayer time um, at, at, at during those treatments as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking to God. I'm doing. I'm mm -hmm. like you, like again uh, with the micro. So yeah. kind of picturing it without actually moving, uh, but it's still helpful. Oh, I'm so happy. Yes. So happy. Yes, I'm happy to have this be a help. And don't you feel like you have a tool? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's a tool that you have in little toolkit that you carry around, huh? In your mind. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I just uh would yeah. like to say too, uh Sandra, how marvelous you look right now. You look so much calmer. And just hearing that testimony right there, I'm just so happy. <laughs> I want to cry. Thank you. I'm so happy Good. for you. Good. Thank you. I'm glad to be able to share it. How many more times you got to do that? Um, twelve more. Twelve more <laughs> sessions, approximately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every uh, one is a step. Uh, yeah, I've been through. It'll be a total of. Um, 78 so i'm down wow. on the downside oh okay yeah wow. way on the downside yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay well <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah all right okay um the third of the questions if you did if you could remember what you answered at the beginning of the study the question had been I would love to widen my window of tolerance. I feel most urgency to work on flight mode so I can better control my tendency to get trapped in anxiety, worry, and fear. Fight mode so I can better control my urge to get angry or aggressive. Or freeze mode so I can more easily recover when I feel discouraged, overwhelmed, or paralyzed. So what improvement did you see for those areas you especially wanted to work on? And you don't need to answer this question out loud if you don't want to, because this isn't Russia. Um, but um, but uh, for anybody that felt like they had a special area of concern, mm -hmm. did it help? Did doing this study help get, give you more ideas about how to deal with that? particular one flight mm -hmm. fight or freeze uh, for me a freeze freeze mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and did it help the first one mm -hmm. yeah okay all right okay sandra oh i'm i'm sorry i didn't mean to talk over teddy oh it's okay um, 
Yeah, I would say the first one would be the first priority, and the third one was a close second for me, actually. Okay. But um, so kind of both, but yeah. yes, it's helpful. It's good. Helpful. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to make a comment? Well, I think the same comment that I made before. There were things that I was I was thinking of either flight or fight, and basically it was down in freeze. So that's that's helped me out a lot. Yeah, just to identify it correctly. Yeah. 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 Isn't it grounding a wonderful drill? Yeah. I it's so <laughs> simple to do, and yet it just it's such a blessing to be able to kind of. This is this is a, a task of self soothing mm -hmm. to help yourself to feel better and to pull yourself out. That, doesn't that feel much more empowering to be able to do that? To know, mm -hmm. okay, I've got I can do this and it will help me feel better. Um, and and did you also find that those of you who had gone through the trust training study? and the after the battle did you uh, there was a comment in there where i talked about after doing the after the battle and learning kind of how to crash um mm -hmm. did that help you so that i mean that crashing is like freeze mode yes. um yes and and so did, I agree. That, did that help you to figure out mm -hmm. ways to to kind of soften the the the, the uh, crash and how to yes. pull out of a crash. Mm -hmm. Did that help with that? Yes. Very oh much. yes. For I me, it did. That, that uh, crashing sometimes would take me into depression. Yeah. And yes. So with this, you know, you can relax but not be depressed or feel guilty. Let's put it that way. Yeah. For resting mm -hmm. and not doing anything, staying in your pajamas all day. Yeah. If necessary, you know, just to rest and just say, you know, my body needs this, my mind needs it, I need it, it's okay. And a little bit of self care goes a long way, but it not allowing myself to go into depression. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a really great uh, thing about it. Okay. Any any other comments on this? So so this is like a pretty cool thing with the. Uh, before and after, I, you know. Oh yes. It's, mm -hmm. you know, how many Bible studies do you go to, and at the end it says, "Okay, which <laughs> time?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> I I like doing that. Okay. Um. So I want to do the, um, you know, going a little bit. Let's turn over to the December thirty-one questions. And kind of relate that back to, so the next thing is on page 252. Okay. So on page 252, um, I give my answer on what, what my, re what I considered my results to be. And in that I said, I think this strategy worked great for two reasons. So what are the two reasons why it worked great to stop and do a drill? Well, the first reason is it manages to the uh, it manages the fear that distorts our thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think this year will have taught us a lot about fear. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and the way people are responding to fear and what and the lengths that they are willing to go mm -hmm. to because of fear. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to wear masks anymore, and yet everybody's still masked up, even that's if they're weird. on the street. Yeah. It's weird, yeah. That's fear. And yeah. it does distort our way of thinking. Fear distorts yeah. our way of thinking terribly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes. And and secondly, it the effect efficiently calms down the rush of thoughts mm -hmm. that only get worse when we're stressed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like nip it in the bud, right, really soon. Yeah. Okay, and and kind of focus it on you know be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. but, it it yeah. puts on the brakes it, it, before you go head on into that panic yeah. attack or yeah. or anger. Yeah. You know, it, it puts those brakes on and yeah. Have you have you been in a situation? And I know you all have. See, so we, we can raise <laughs> hands on this one because I think everybody's hand where where your mind gets in a loop. 
<gasps> stress. Yeah. Like you can't get out of the loop. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So raise the hand. Yeah, I think that's a, a, a everybody. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I think one of the things that this does is if you're in a trapped in a loop, it it forces mm -hmm. you to stomp and do something different, which breaks the rhythm of the loop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think yeah. anytime that you're stuck in, oh, I'm going to die and this is going to happen and then that's going to happen, and then that's gonna happen and I'm gonna, ah, you know, that kind of a thing to, to be able to stop and say, okay, which drill would be good to do and do that drill, you know, that two or three minutes of, of doing something different that shifts mm -hmm. what's going on in your brain it's harder than to go back to the loop because you've broken the rhythm of it. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think this is a good thing to do. All right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what reverse, what rever right now that you're talking, what verse comes to mind, it says, you know, uh, set your mind on things above. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's the whole thing. We're setting our, our, our mind and our eyes on things around us, the things of the earth. Instead of mm -hmm. setting our mind. And I think that this is what it does. It just, you know, it helps us to set our mind in yeah. the, correct, the, the correct place. Yes, I think so. Uh, I, I think very, yes, very much so. Um, um, yes, good. Uh, so now the next one, test two, and I talk about that on 253 and, uh, no, just 253. So there's the diagram, and the diagram looks like this. Uh -huh. You, if you, if you, you know, rev up into fight or flight, then we know to do stand down drill to pull us back into the window of tolerance. If we shut down into um, freeze mode, grounding will pull us back toward the window of tolerance. Okay, so that's what that is. So the test was I able to successfully and consistently pull myself out of flight, fight, or freeze using the drills, uh, even when under extreme stress. And um, the question I have is, why would it be a great idea to continue practicing the drills, you know, even though we're at the end of the study? Well, it becomes a habit. It's just, <laughs> that's why you want to continue on. You want to stay in this mindset that we have... Uh, Mm -hmm. learned you know and yeah. that it just becomes a, a natural thing for us yeah. yeah yeah when i finished doing this year of you know pr of experiments mm -hmm. and and i i mentioned you know at the end talking about okay the next year i'm doing a different thing um i stopped doing the drills for quite a while and, you know, after a while, it was harder to keep, you know, connected to the peace of Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I figured out, you know what, for me, doing the drills is a, it, it has become connected in my mind as a way for me to bring myself to peace so that I can connect with God, who is the God of mm -hmm. That yes. it's like, I need to do my part. And, right. And it's, it's, it's a good idea to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. and this isn't, you know, every day obsessively for the rest of your life. But I think, you know what, it, it's once a week or a couple of times a week, I think it would still be good so that it, you know, keeps you in practice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I could see that because get you back grounded. If, yeah. you know, something went on, but okay, it went through, but then you might start thinking of it again. Yeah. You know, it might start trying to rear its head again and where you can say, well, no, yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah. And I can see how that would be really helpful. Um, this little analogy in, in while you've been talking about this keeps popping into my head of just like with uh, the kids to stop, drop and roll. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the, the three sections I'm... <laughs> Yeah, you're in the same thing to stop your mind, you know, yeah. to keep it from rolling on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes, that's a that's a great analogy. Thank you. <laughs>
I love that. <laughs> that very much pictures it. Yeah, good. Okay. That's my school, my uh, <laughs> grade school teaching. <laughs> you don't never, you never forget that. <laughs> you know what? Grade school teaching is so much more effective with adults too, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's simple. What is it? Kiss. <laughs> Smokey yeah. the bear, you know. Simple, stupid. Right. Okay. So on the test three, was I able to widen my normal range this year so I didn't flip into survivor mode as often? And if I did flip, was I better able to control the degree of my reaction to avoid the extremes? And um, and so uh, so I talk about four ways that I could see that it expanded my window of tolerance. Okay. And uh, so what four ways did Dee Dee expand your window of tolerance? How about you? Which ones would you like to add to your own report of progress you made during the study? This, from reading what I said, how, how, much, how many would you like to add to to your own yes that happened to me too is basically what i'm asking okay so what are the so why don't we go through the four in uh kind of you know oh, one at a time and so um uh the the quick over override um um so so because of this i handled more situations while completely within the norm normal mode instead of partly from survivor mode mm -hmm. and if i happened to get hijacked it took much longer for the adrenaline okay B before it took a lot longer to just kind of have it naturally dissipate mm -hmm. um, the adrenaline okay so this was like a quick okay adrenaline surges and then it, we shut it down pretty quickly you know what okay. this this reminds me the four steps reminds me a lot about boot camp because that's the whole thing, the quick override. They've got to train the soldiers to react. They do have an adrenaline, adrenaline yeah. surge. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the, the bullets are flying all around them. You've got to have an adrenaline surge. Yeah. But, it, but they are trained to override that. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. And I think this, the, uh, these people, I, I, it, it just to me, it just, we're trained, we're being trained, we're being trained, we're being trained, we're being trained. Yeah. This is, this is very much training. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you could channel that adrenaline to what you need to do. Right. Yeah. Not, not be in panic mode about it. Yeah. But say, with a soldier, what does he need to do to, to stay alive and to, to help keep his fellow soldiers alive and yeah. accomplish their task? Yeah. So. Good. Okay. They know what to do. They know what right. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, number two, in a way that widened my um, window of tolerance, um, the, the Lord helped me to rid myself of anger and then put a fence around the upper end to say, don't allow yourself to get that mad again. Um, mm -hmm. So I felt like that was, and I, and that was a huge aha moment for me to realize that if I'm in anger, it will always feel icky to, to do uh, uh, stand down. Because mm -hmm. I feel passionately that I am right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that was a huge, huge insight um, that I needed to, even though I feel totally right, I, I really need to um, shut it down. I think we can go back to your cup and the frog, though, with that. Mm -hmm. Dini? In what way? Well, if we feel very, very angry, at least we can take a step back mm -hmm. and say, am I hiding some, some other emotion that I haven't, I haven't dealt with? Yeah. I mean, is this a truth or, is it, or am, I, am, I, am I going on an emotion? Yeah. Do I feel threatened? Do I feel... You know, is, is it my pride, um, whatever? Yeah. Almost always, um, the, the anger will cover a, a, a vul more vulnerable emotion. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So to have anger, well, but then there's also the times, I don't think that when Jesus 
came to the temple and saw that the that the money changers had completely taken over the court of the Gentiles, so that the Gentiles had no place to pray with any kind of focus because there's you know it's a, like in in the town mm. square um, circus yeah <laughs> and he got angry and that was appropriate yeah yes justified righteous. righteous anger and there wasn't an underlying vulnerable feeling for jesus um, because it was a truth it was a truth it was, right a truth. It was true yeah. and and for him getting a whip and and driving everybody out was the was an appropriate level of reaction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i don't think that we need to anytime i'm angry that means that i should shut it down it just means if if i'm angry and it's for a righteous reason i need to kind of control myself so control, that I can yeah. get a point okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. Um, all right. How about, uh, I was in a situation this past weekend and I won't go into any detail about it, but I suddenly, uh, found myself under tremendous attack mm -hmm. from a totally unexpected source. And, wow. and I, I did not handle it by the book i just i was so surprised by it and i i couldn't escape from it and i just and so i i kind of felt like for the sake of honesty and i don't want you to leave this thing and go okay now i need to do 100% perfectly at every moment. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I will be able to do 100% perfectly at every moment. Man, I, I was, I, I just was caught flat footed. And, yeah. um, and it would have helped me tremendously to have been able to step back and to say, hey, could we stop and take a break? And then mm -hmm. come back. That would have been the smart move to do, um, because I was totally overwhelmed with, mm -hmm. you know, I, a shock, and uh, I did not feel that I was in the wrong, um, and others disagreed. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it was something where it, it would have been helpful to have said stop and take a break. Yeah. So I'm reading a book by John Gottman right now called The Science of Trust, and it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty cool book. Um, I'm going to wait until Louisa gets on. I'm here. Oh, howdy, howdy, howdy. Okay, I'm in the middle of an anecdote about a time this weekend where I completely got caught flat-footed and um, was verbally attacked in a way I wasn't expecting and did not do well. And I <laughs> partly making the point of saying, just because we've gone through this book doesn't mean we're going to handle everything perfectly. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to share that to say, you know, I didn't handle it perfectly. But mm -hmm. then I wanted to make a point from from Gottman. Um, I've been reading his book, and it's almost 500 pages so don't, <laughs> and it's almost 50 dollars. so don't, don't you don't need to worry about it um okay. <laughs> but, but one thing that he says he's the one that had the the place where he, he you know had my, all kinds of things hooked up to people to test sweat and breathing oh. and what was going mm -hmm. to eyes and you know heart and lungs and you know all that stuff and people watching to see you know to see what kind of a phrase they were using and everything and he's the one who came up with the idea that if if you are if you suddenly find yourself in an in an argument or a, a big altercation if you stop and take your blood you know you know figure out what your heart rate is 
Mm -hmm. and it is 100 beats per minute or more, mm. you are flooded. Yeah. And, mm. and, and pilot has been shut down mm. and you are not able to hear what the other person is saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, they are not able to hear and understand what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And if I had had the presence mm. of mind, I have a Fitbit, you know, I mean, right now I'm at, <laughs> you know, I, don't I, mind you. I normally <laughs> I'm really low on my heart rate, but I think that that's one of the things that I take out of this. And this is a note to self that I, I, I encourage you to do. If you have a Fitbit um, and you find yourself mm -hmm. like I was, it was like I was ambushed and mm -hmm. I did not feel like I was in the wrong, but others vigorously thought I was in the wrong. Um, mm. If I look at my Fitbit and just see what my heart rate is, I would have insisted, hey, we need to take a break right now to calm yeah. down because my heart rate is over 100 and I'm seriously not able to hear and comprehend what you're saying. Even if, if you're making great points, I've, I'm not able to understand yeah. it. And the, however you can do that. And remember, if you can say that to the person, say it to the person. If you can't say it to the person, just say, you know what? I got to pee really bad. You know, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's always a good excuse for yeah. women. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does, because yeah. that could diffuse it right there. Yes. You know, to sit so. down and talk about it calmly then, like, yeah. especially with the heart rate, like, oh, I don't want to give her a heart attack, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, so, and I think, see, see, the other person was not at all trained in what to do um, oh. during a break, but, um, but if it's somebody in your immediate family, it would be really good to to tell them this idea of the 100 beats per minute mm -hmm. to say if things start to get too heated we need to stop and take a 20 minute break and the the purpose of 20 minutes is even if you have no training for anything 20 minutes gives your adrenaline time to naturally dissolve. oh wow okay without any training. Okay. If we do stand down, we we shorten that amount of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um but uh if there's no training on the other side, they need 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um I could I could really use this. Yeah, from Yeah. I'm sorry. I just my my daughter and granddaughter got into a very heated argument in at my house and I was we were all three in the kitchen and i was praise god i i remain calm and uh, but now i actually saw the conflict between the two of them yeah and the anger the, the pure anger of my granddaughter mm -hmm. you know uh, against her mother which to be rightfully so you know um she really w way overreacted about um so. Not calling me. She was coming over to my house, not calling me because they were stuck at another place and she had left her phone here. So she couldn't call me. Mm -hmm. She didn't know my phone number because it's always in our phones. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So she, she had no way of calling me and, and she was with her boyfriend. He didn't have my phone number in his phone. Yeah. So nobody could contact me. And then my daughter, instead of finding out what happened, without yelling just blew well she had been drinking and it just yeah went south real quick yeah you know so now i actually saw what my granddaughter has been telling me yeah is this a new idea to you to, to you all the idea mm -hmm. yes a very helpful thing if you are married to somebody or if you're in the house with somebody mm -hmm. if it would be a good idea for, for you to just say, okay, you know, have them listen to this last thing. So it's 
you know, the words coming from, you know, Dee Dee instead of you, you know, or something. Mm -hmm. But the idea, this is a scientifically um, um, verified, it has the, it has been tested out since the 80s. Okay, so that's, yeah. you know, we're coming on close to 40 years worth of, of testing of this idea. And so it's yeah. 100 feet per minute, and you weren't out jogging, and then, you know, it's because of exercise, mm -hmm. but you're at 65 beats per minute, like I was minding my own business. I didn't know anything was wrong. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I get blasted. You know, and wow. so, so, so if I had, and there's a note, to, if I had looked at my Fitbit, it would have helped me. And I, and yes. I, and I'd have to do it in a subtle way because people hate it when you look at your watch, when you're, <laughs> 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 you know, I got places to be, but, you know, you, know, <laughs> you, for your, you, you look at your watch and your eyes bug out, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, but I can save my granddaughter my old Fitbit. So yeah. that's going to be perfect. I'm going to talk to her today about that. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a kind of a last minute tips and, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. That's okay. wonderful. Okay. Uh, the third one was about worries and fears. I definitely saw measurable improvement regarding worries, anxieties, and fears. Mm -hmm. um, uh, God also helped me resolve a number of topics, getting that click in my spirit about the what ifs and locking down promises to stand on helped me to, to quit shifting into fear mode about those topics. Um, and now if I start to worry something, it's become a well-established habit to remind myself of what I have learned and mm -hmm. to calm down um for me main topic of conversation of uh, of fear is uh is uh retirement issues and <laughs> um and uh health you know my health son's health family people's health you know that kind of thing yeah. and so so this has helped me to to short circuit the what ifs and if i find that i'm going into a I have my page that is like, you know, I had, you know, this, this kind of a page. Mm -hmm. I have a page of, of, of promise, you know, firm ground to stand on about retirement. Mm -hmm. And I have a page mm -hmm. to, a firm ground to stand on about health issues. Okay. And so, it, and it's handy. I keep it with my stuff when I do my quiet time. So I can pull it out. Mm -hmm. you know all the time that's wonderful okay. yeah so this is something really that can with you okay i'm gonna do it <laughs> all right I, I wrote it down so I'm, i want to practice that so if something does catch me off guard something yeah. weird comes up again i can just go to this and say okay what is god trying to teach me yeah. you know write it down yeah and that'll really help yeah that'll really help do you like the title of it of being firm ground yes mm -hmm. because with the what ifs it's all these well what if what if and it's all up here in the air and yeah so this gets me back okay here's my firm ground you know uh uh here's isaiah right here listen to me O house of jacob all you who remain of the house of israel you whom I have upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Is that like oh, wow. is that like amazing retirement firm ground? What was the yes. again on that? What? That's Isaiah. I, that's Isaiah. 46 verse 3 and 4. 46, Isaiah. Three. I, I, know it. Mm -hmm. I like that very much. Oh, here. I need to I need to do it to the <laughs> to the camera, yeah, not to the screen. Where'd she go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Isaiah 46. 
Forty-six. Uh, four. Great. Oh, you Thank want you. another one? You want another one of my firm grounds? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. This is for retirement. It's Psalm 37, 16, 18, and 19. And it's in um, NIV version. I like the NIV version. It says, better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In times of famine, they will enjoy plenty. Yeah. It, it, I love that one because it's saying, right? Yeah. You it like is. That one? Yeah. Right on. And it's, and it's, Anybody that talks to you about going into retirement says you have to have a million, billion, zillion dollars, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You'll never survive, you know, retirement. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you don't have this humongous pot of money, um, right? And it says better the little. Yeah. The right One day at a time. <laughs> than the wealth of many wicked, okay? And mm -hmm. the blameless spend their days under the Lord's care. Um, I, that seems like a pretty safe place for me. Um, so, so be wise, but we may not have all the money. Do you? Sorry. What? I said, we may not have all the money, but our father ha it owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Yes. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Hello, talk about a sugar daddy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. So isn't that great to begin mm -hmm. building? We need to build specific firm ground for different mm -hmm. things. And the, yeah, and if you're looking for it, the Lord will, you know, I got them right here and I've got them on a paper, you know, for my quiet time. Because those are yeah. good ones to have. I can see your organization system there. You know, you can just check and pull this stuff She's out. Amazing. She's amazing. I said, I said, I got to see your organizational system that you've got there. You just reach up and pull down all these stuff. You know. Well, it's all <laughs> right notes. Right <laughs> notes. Yeah, I've got yeah. a whole line of things along the top here. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Well, just a cork board, just pin them up on a cork board, you know? Yeah. Main idea is to have them easy and yeah. very accessible because we get some new crisis that comes and we freak out as if we didn't know any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I think that this is, you know, you could look through Psalm 139. There are just tons of verses there about God's care for us and he loves us and he, he knows what's going on with us, you know? Um, so, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of places to look. Yeah. Louisa, did you wanted to say something? Yeah. So I've been reading through Deuteronomy and when you're talking about these, this firm foundation in these verses, the first thing I thought of was uh, in Deuteronomy 17, where, the command is that the king should have uh, God's word, whatever it was at the time that they had, I'm assuming at that point it was a Torah yeah. and that he needs to read it every single day, as long as he lives to obey and to fear the Lord and to understand his instructions. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm thinking when you're saying for a foundation, you know, these people, the Israelites literally saw God in the form of the cloud and in the form of the yes. fire. They yeah. still messed up so much. And every little thing that came their way threw them into a tailspin like it does to yeah. us. And so yeah. God knows us. And so by every day reading his word, like you said, if you're reading it, mm -hmm. he's going to give you what you need for that day yeah. to follow, yeah. have your instructions, mm -hmm. to yeah. live and walk with him daily. So I think aside from all the amazing tools we learned in our study, which a huge part of those tools was get into God's word, have this stuff mm -hmm. prepared, have your post-its, have your, have your things that will prevent those fiery darts from Satan from entering and from yeah. being able to attack you. 
Yeah. Um, I was listening to a sermon the other day and the, and the pastor said, you know, sometimes when we're thinking about spiritual warfare, we're like imagining that the devil with his little red horns is coming to get yeah. us, you know, <laughs> yes. but, but in that. reality, it's, it's more sin. Like we need to think about it in terms of our sin, our sin of not trusting mm-hmm. God enough sometimes, or I don't want to say enough, but you know what I mean? Letting ourselves spiral is not pleasing to God, you know? Yeah. So all of this just kind of goes back to trusting and following and having your, we are now set up. We did a lot of work to be set up for success and it's just trusting in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Louisa. Appreciate that. All right. Um, How are we doing? Let's see. 15 Um, minutes. (laughs) Doing great. Actually, I, I usually aim for being done by quarter of and often don't make it, but oh well. <laughs> I, I do want to uh, make a comment about the last two notes. Um, the one about the index, I, I do want to encourage you to remember that if you if you need to go back and you're trying to figure out, well, what was where was that that was talking about flight mode or where was that that was talking about trauma Mm -hmm. or something that the, that the, um, the uh, index in the back, I've I've tried to make it really user friendly. So, so like just at a random page, here are all of the, all of the entries that started freeze mode and something. Okay. So if you wanted to just go back and read everything that there was in the book about freeze mode, mm-hmm. here's the list for it. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. For grounding, there are more uh, entries for grounding. And so all of them are written. And um, I, I want you to notice in the book that the first ones are, uh, do you know uh, what Sam Serif? And serif is, you know what that means? So sans serif is uh, like aerial. It has no little hooky, curly cue kind of things. Okay. Oh, oh the, the typeface. Yeah. Yeah. So so I'm looking at page 270. Okay. So on 270, I've got grounding and, and then the first one, two, three, four are in are in like aerial you know they're in a font and what those are is those are teaching times at the beginning of you know when we were reviewing the the workshop that we had done okay Mm -hmm. and then the the, and then the ones that are in sarah you know we have the little curly cues that's the regular Mm garamon font okay those are all of the entries all year long that had to do with grounding Okay, mm-hmm. so so this so I, I know for for a lot of us there's one or you know there's some places that are that are more of a struggle or where where there's need for more practice and this is something where kind of a shortcut way of going back and looking at you know if you want to review something specific. Okay, mm-hmm. does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, and then the other part is that I, I it seemed like we were doing tons of reading, <laughs> but um, I deliberately didn't have us do all of the entries. First of all, mm-hmm. I did do 365 entries. I only mm-hmm. did about 78 or something. Um, mm-hmm. But then I didn't have us read all 78. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 entries that I I just omitted. So if you want to go back, you can read those. Or at some point, and my suggestion is, you know, wait a couple of months or three months or something, and then just read the whole thing through again as if it was a novel. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that that would help you and you would hit all of these that were that I omitted, um, and so, so does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any last thoughts or comments? I think we're about to wind things up, and it's eleven thirty-five, yeah. and I think we're good. Wonderful. Yeah.
Any thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you for comments. Mm -hmm. Thank Excellent. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're thank tremendously you. Indebted, indebted to you. Oh, yes. Lord, but to you, because you were willing. Oh, it's been my pleasure. I just oh. love uh, being able to to uh, uh, talk with more people, a wider wider audience, and I just really have appreciated <laughs> uh, you uh, being willing to play along <laughs> to, to you know, go through this Bible study and see how it would work. So, um, yeah. Yeah, COVID did a lot of things for us, you know, <laughs> forcing us into doing things different ways yeah. that have uh, enlightened us. Mm -hmm. so I've heard that from so many people. Like I would have never thought about doing it this way or yeah. or handling it that way. They're, yeah. you know, so they, they don't want it to go back to normal. Yeah, they like the new normal. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Well, thank you too for all the work that it took to get to this, you know, this book and then the study, all that. Mm. Yeah, I oh, appreciate I, that. Thank you so much. And yes. if any of you saw more uh, uh, typos or things, um, it, uh, seriously, let me know. I, I assembled quite a few, and I even did a few for this morning on, uh, you know, little. Tag yeah. the top because oh this needs to be fixed or something. So if uh -huh. you found any more, because I found quite a few. Uh, so <laughs> so at some point I'm gonna go back and revise those. Um, so uh, anyway anyway uh, how are we doing? Are we about done? I hope you. I'm gonna miss this group. I'm gonna miss seeing you guys every uh, Saturday. Yeah, oh yeah yeah. yeah. We're this gonna miss seeing cool. you guys. Yeah. Well, can't you just still join us when yeah. we start a next one? We'll let you know. They well, got a to me. They have to zoom me. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all. I'm a zoomer help. now. Yeah. Now, now we've learned a new skill. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Um, I think that we will um, stop the recording. And...